Hello, my name is Alan Prost, and I'm going to talk to you about the high frequency oscillator as part of the course of REST 220 here at SAIT. Now, we've talked about volume control ventilation, we've talked about pressure control ventilation as control variables for mechanical ventilation, and now we're going to look at a specific ventilator that uses time as a control variable, and that's high frequency ventilation. So, we can fire this ventilator up and I'll try to show you some of the interrelationships between using that. We've got our, um, we're going to actually be oscillating a pig lung today, and I've got our other computer set up to show you the differences in waveforms. So I'll take you through our basic setup of the high frequency oscillator. Okay, as we come up to the high frequency oscillator, you can see that we've got an um, active humidity circuit here. This is true of all oscillators. It's very drying to the airways. We seem to have a lot of problems with retained secretions. So we always use an active humidity system. One of the other things that's nice about that is that we don't need to use as many filters for our patients and we don't lose that compressible volume due to having the air going through a filter. When we look up here at the controls, we see that we can set a power. and That's the amount of power or amplitude driven to our speaker here, which is the, where we're getting the oscillation from. I'll fire it up in just a minute here. We also set the inspiratory time. That's an important element. And instead of a rate control, we set up hertz. Now, one hertz is equal to 60 breaths per minute. So a rate um, control here, if this was set at one, would be 60. Um, this is 360 breaths per minute at this setting right here. This is how we control our mean airway pressure, which is showing up to us in one of the other corners. And we have a set flow, as you can hear, going through the circuit at all times. So we can set our mean airway pressure limit and our bias flow here as well. So let's hear what it looks like when we set it up. I'm just going to pressurize it. So it makes a, quite an unusual sound. You can see, actually, the, kind of like the stereo speaker element here oscillating back and forth. So we have a continuous flow of gas going through the circuit here and then this kind of speaker element here oscillates it back and forth giving us this jiggling motion that we see here in our test lung. All right? Our test lung is actually our pig lungs. So the basic circuit we have here in the Show you I've got an endotracheal tube here to pretend we've got them intubated and we've got our active humidity circuit in here as well. So this is our mean airway pressure. That's one of the critical elements for oxygenation is oscillating around this mean airway pressure. So I can adjust the, the amount of bias flow and the mean airway pressure with our controls here. So this is the way we control our mean airway pressure. So to get better oxygenation, I can have a higher mean airway pressure. Now the actual volume delivered between each kind of breath cycle is controlled a little bit with our amplitude. And this is a neonatal version, so our amplitude is kind of maxed out right now at 60. But this would give us the amount of attenuation we'd see between each of these cycles here. So the red line on our, wave, on our graph here indicates the proximal airway pressure. The white line is the, on the distal end of the endotracheal tube. And the green line is on the other end of the filter. So you can see there's some um, pressure loss due to resistance with each breath. This is one second of time. So you can see we're giving one, two, three, four, five, six, six breaths per second, just like we'd expect. So with the high frequency oscillator, the first thing we do is we often set up a mean airway pressure just slightly higher than we were achieving with our conventional ventilation. Then we're going to set up our driving pressure and our two get good chest movement. So that'll be something we just visually have to achieve when looking at our patient's chest. With neonatal patients, this can often be achieved at quite a bit lower pressures and often as high as 90 required for adult patients. The inspiratory time is usually left at 33%. 
you don't vary that too much. And then the frequency can be adjusted to meet the resonant frequency of the lungs. So if we increase that, you'll see that the, you can hear the sound change. It's not uncommon to use uh, frequencies as high as 12 to 15 hertz on a neonatal patient. Now what happens at this higher frequency is that the actual tidal volume of the amount of gas movement between each breath becomes less. You see there's not quite as much tidal volume developed in the lung. But we can still get adequate gas exchange with this. And of course, the critical element is the mean airway pressure. So let's look at our waveforms here. You can see we're giving a quite a high frequency. And our mean airway pressure here is going to be about 18 centimeters of water pressure. So like conventional ventilation, we think that there's a relationship, of course, between the height or the amount of pressure deli delivered to the lungs and, of course, the frequency that it's delivered. our mean airway pressure here. You see the overall descending force in the lungs becomes higher. You see the lungs are actually coming down in size with a lower mean airway pressure. And as I increase the mean airway pressure, we're oscillating now at a much higher mean airway pressure of about 40 centimeters of water pressure, which is a lot. our brief introduction to the high frequency oscillator and we're going to review that in class. We'll talk to you on 